Hello, everyone. Welcome to Aeon's Cyber Pulse podcast. I'm Michael Parent, and I'm joined today by Paul Grasso, Head of Property for Reinsurance for Aeon, to discuss the role of reinsurance as organisations look for support and protection against cyber risk. There is no question that cyber threat landscape has substantially changed over the last few years. With ransomware in particular, we've seen the escalation in frequency coupled with the escalation in sophistication and severity of the attacks across all types of organisations and industries. Paul, perhaps we can start more broadly. Um, could you please take our listeners through how reinsurance plays a critical role in supporting organisations as they seek insurance protection against cyber exposures? Thanks, Michael. Reinsurance plays a large role in the cyber market with an estimated 40% of all cyber risks being ceded to reinsurers. Given this reliance, understanding how reinsurance markets are viewing cyber exposures and the current hard market conditions will give us an insight into the likely behaviour of insurers over the next 12 months in respect to cyber coverage. With respect to cyber losses, the, the landscape for both insurers and reinsurers has certainly changed over recent years and ransomware becomes a, an unavoidable topic. Aon's data shows roughly a 500% increase in cyber attacks over the past year, with several high profile events occurring already in 2021. But whilst these recent events may have had limited market impact, the increasing frequency of these types of events and the systemic potential of cyber attacks underscores the caution that reinsurers are approaching in their pricing and coverage decisions. Excellent. So you've mentioned caution from reinsurers when it comes to pricing and coverage. Do you want to just walk us through um, how they are approaching both these topics? Yeah, thanks. Look, in addition to any cyber specific concerns uh, already discussed, reinsurer earnings have returned below their required cost of capital since 2017. This is largely driven by the impact of higher than average net cat losses occurring globally. Capital adequacy is strong, but rating agencies and investors are requiring adequate returns, which has resulted in a greater focus by reinsurers uh, when assessing the quality of the original risks that they're underwriting. Consequently, though, they will be requiring more granular information around underwriting guidelines, coverage definitions, risk selections, and remediation strategies going forward for all classes of business. Putting these two factors together, we expect that reinsurer appetite to expand coverage and capacity across cyber will be limited. We are seeing uh, the industry look to be more explicit around event definitions and to pinpoint specific vulnerabilities around ransomware within each of their clients' portfolios. Excellent, thanks, Paul. Understanding how these two factors into play is actually quite critical. So could we move on to look at how the reinsurance market responds to cyber risk exposure and how that's changing? And perhaps we can touch on silent cyber, which is a, a large and immersive topic. Do you wanna share some thoughts? Certainly. The recent attack on the US-based colonial oil and gas pipeline has highlighted the current susceptibility of critical infrastructure, in particular to ransomware and other attacks under property and ISR exposures seated to reinsurers. Recent mandates initiated by Lloyds in 2020 introduced updated policy language with the express aim of addressing silent cyber exposures within insurance and reinsurance coverages to distinguish between exposures that they believe should fall to property and ISR policies and those that should be affirmatively covered under a bespoke cyber policy. Just to clarify, silent cyber is the unknown exposure in an insurance portfolio created by cyber peril, which has not been explicitly, explicitly excluded. Silent cyber has really been around for as long as insurers have relied upon information and technology in the running of their businesses. So by removing silent cyber coverage from a property reinsurance contract, these risks can then be properly underwritten and priced by a dedicated cyber reinsurance market. And what we saw during the most recent reinsurance renewal was an explicit exclusion for all malicious and non-malicious cyber exposures. However, reinsurers were willing to provide cover if such a loss was the result of a peril ordinarily covered. So a fire loss is still covered regardless of the original cause. And the value of any lost data, however, is excluded under these wordings, but reinsurers will cover any costs associated with reinstating the data. At a time. Great insights, thanks, Paul. To round out the conversation, could I ask for your thoughts on how reinsurers view cyber exposures when considering how and where to deploy their capital? Yes, yeah, sure, thanks. Uh, there is genuine concern from reinsurers about the systemic nature of cyber risk, which has seen a halt on increased deployment of capital across the market, but they still have appetite to grow. Increasingly, we see that the key success factor in securing reinsurance capacity is the ability of students to adequately demonstrate to reinsurers their understanding of their underlying exposures, their risk selection, and the differentiation of their portfolio when compared to their peers. The focus is on achieving adequate returns above cost of capital, uh, and that's driven a shift in reinsurer appetite overall across the traditional market, leading to much greater scrutiny when deploying capital across each segment of the market. 
In short, the better understood risks will actively be sought and the more opaque risks will be harder to, to place and face pricing and coverage challenges. Alternative Capital has supplemented reinsurance capacity in the property reinsurance market for a number of years. And if we compare the traditional market to Alternative Capital, there's certainly opportunities to bring these new solutions to the table. However, cyber is relatively new uh, for investors who have typically operated in products covering purely just net cap, net cap exposures. These markets are heavily model driven, and this means that support for new products and in innovation depends on model maturity and transparency. But at the end of the day, alternative capital can provide diversity of capital for buyers to consider, which is as important as ever in the hard market environment. However, the pressure for sustained profitability is the common theme that we're seeing across. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. That's some expert commentary there. I'm sure our audience will have found um, your insights quite helpful as they think about their reinsurance and their cyber risk exposures more broadly. Well, that's all we have time for today. So thank you for listening. If you do have any questions about what we've talked about today, please don't hesitate to reach out to your cyber team at Aon.